So when in prison, he has sent his disciples that he started now doubting. Go, is he is this the savior? And the is it the one we were expecting or we go ask for another one? If this is the same John who had baptized Jesus, this is the same John who had had the voice from heaven. And he has changed when he is in prison and say, Go and ask, Are you the living Messiah? Or we search for another one? This is what happened. The moment we get problem, we start doubting the presence of God in our life. Even when he has done great things in our life, and things have now started changing and they are not working according to the way we expect them, now we start saying, is he the true Messiah that we are serving? Are we really serving the true Messiah? If you if 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 you are uh, if you are doing something and uh, it happens like it didn't succeed the way you were expecting it to happen, you start now doubting whether you are serving the true God, and that is a human nature. But when you read from the book of Job, chapter nineteen and verse twenty-five, it says that Job says, "Do I know?" My Redeemer does what? My Redeemer lives. But even when we go into problems and when we pass through issues, we should stand and say, truly, I know my Redeemer lives. But, but we in life, when we don't, things don't work like that. This is John who has baptized Jesus, but he's doubting again because he's in prison and he has not been released. He's doubting the presence of the Messiah. So, what do we do in life when we go through challenges? Do we really cling and cleave in the presence of the Savior? Uh, sometimes, you know, in life you pass through issues. When I was learning in the medical school, when you go there, there are a lot of challenges. Because when you are having consultants and you are a student and you are presenting to them a case, they can kid over and then talk to you harshly. But the patient is listening. So the patient notices this one who is in a white coat, this one is a student. It's not a qualified uh, person there. So when he does, Next time when you go to take a history from that patient, the patient says like, this is a waste of time, this is a student. I came here for treatment, I didn't come here for students to learn from me. I'm not just here to be used to learn. So, during the exam, we have exams and then we do practical exams. There is an exam that is called, uh, you do quick diagnosis called spot diagnosis. Like, I see you, ask you one question, look at you, and then make a diagnosis. Then you examine the camps, and then you talk about that case. But you see now, these patients have known these are the students. So getting you information is very difficult from them, because I didn't come to the hospital. So that is what happened. People put their up with Kusomwa, so as a student, you, you humble yourself. But there are some patients who are very difficult and there are some who are. So I remember one time I landed on a very difficult patient. Huh? And you have 15 minutes to do for diagnosis and then you are done doing exam. And it is determining you are your life. And then my colleague told me, no, but we may have to be able to We So, I think it's okay. It's okay. It, it was very disturbing. Because you are allocated the patient, and then it is very disturbing to you. 
you start thinking, what am I going to do? Because after 15 minutes, I'm supposed to be examined, and then I explain what it is. And you know the patient is very difficult. So in my thinking, I, I didn't have anything to do because I was expecting that patient, no matter what they do, and I shook a blanket and I just meet. They do not mama on a mze, mze. It's quiet completely. And time is going, the examiner will come, will want to know what you are done. Then in my child, I prayed and said, God, help me with this old man, whether he will listen to me and accept me. Then I went to him, and as I was going to him, then I started whistling. But at some point, I saw him reading the Bible. So when I went to him, and then I went there, and then I said, When you fail, you will not tell your parents that my this patient was very difficult. And when you are your examiner come, you will not tell the examiner that this patient didn't want to talk to me. If just like a zero, and that is that is the end of it. So when that man had me whistle that song as I was going there, he he opened his his, his blanket and looked at me. And I assumed like I am not seeing what is, I continued singing the song. Then he asked me, young man, are you a 70 day Adventist? What do you expect me to say very fast? Yes, I'm a 70 day Adventist. Then, He looked at me, I told him, what do you want me to help you? Then I told him, I want to examine you. And then he told me, I'm also a Seventh-day Adventist. You can examine me. Praise the Lord. So meaning, when you walk with the name of Jesus with you, when you are doing anything and you walk with the name of Jesus with you, expect, expect a change in your life. Amen? When you walk with the name of Jesus even into your exam room, when you walk with the name of Jesus even to the interview, expect a change of your life. So in this life that we are living in, let's walk with what? With the name of who? The name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of who? It will joy and conduct taught you take it anywhere you go precious name oh how sweet hope of us and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet Hope of us and joy of heaven. But this name, this
precious name of Jesus. This Savior that John came to make a way for is truly born and is here for us. And when you walk with the name of the Savior, and when you trust the Savior, and when you don't doubt the Savior, be sure you will not be the same again. Amen. So in life, in life as we are living, kindly let's walk with the name of who? Even when you are meeting in the choir, even when you are congregating in the choir, even when you are composing choir, the choir, uh, the songs, very good songs, the songs that we have sung here, let the name of Jesus be with you. You could sometimes we do a good song, and these songs don't speak to us. We sing marvelous. People say amen. But does that song speak to you? If you want the song to speak to you, allow the name of Jesus to guide you. And when you walk with the name of Jesus, people will see you and say, truly, this is the child of who? Child of God. When, when Peter was seated in the fire and Jesus has been crucified, he is going to be crucified, those people noticed Peter from the way he was speaking. They said, this one is God's disciple of this man. Can people identify you in your community that truly this is the child of God? So, in every situation that we are in, in everything that we do, and that we serve the Lord, let's take the name of Jesus with who? With us. And the Lord will do things that we never expected that they will be done in our life. So every life that we live, every school that we learn, are you taking the name of Jesus with you? If you want to do well in your academic, if you want to do well in your profession, if you want to do well in your team, do you take the name of Jesus with you? And I promise you that if we take the name of Jesus with us, life will not be the same again. And we will succeed in everything that we do. I want to conclude by saying this. That all that we are doing, we are very sure that the Messiah has come, died, resurrected, and rose to heaven. So, all our burden, all our need, all what we want, let's take these burdens to Calvary. And in that cross, everything that we take there will be made easier for us. I want us to sing this song. I don't know whether it's known. My, come both of you. Huh? Days are filled with sorrow. Do we know the song? Raise your hand if you know the song. Amen. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and gloom. Burdens are lifted up. Jesus is praying in Cast your care on Jesus today Leave your worry and fear Burdens are 